Hey everybody, so since I'm freshly showered and not looking like crap, I thought I would come on here and um, continue sharing the uh, work that I've been doing on myself regarding getting to the bottom of why I'm attracted to narcissists because I know many of us out there are, right? I'm not, I'm not the only one, I know that. So, um, so this is part two of uh, me doing Splunkna on myself to, um, to basically, you know, partner with Jesus and ask um, him to lead me, you know, via his Holy Spirit as to what lies and vows I have partnered with um, to cause me to be attracted like a magnet to narcissists, right? So that I can uh, address those lies and vows through... Um, what I call the prayerful steps to freedom. It's basically the the same steps that that they do in Splankna. Um, um, and just to go over that real quickly, you know, you confess, you um, repent, renounce, revoke, you break the yokes, invite the Holy Spirit, um, which includes inviting Jesus to replace whatever lie or vow with truth, um, and then you forbid retaliation from the enemy. So anyway, um, so I'm gonna just uh, pick up where I left off, which was actually, I, I ended up doing more work on the 26th, which was uh, the part one. Um, so I'm just going to go over that, and then I'm probably going to dive into and do some more. And then if I feel like it, I'll make another video. So we'll see. All right, so the next set that I did was One Memory at Birth, and the emotions were vivid dreaming and shut down. And the lie that I had believed was uh, that life was not worth living. So I had to address that lie. I had to renounce all that and everything. <clears throat> okay, so I want you to pay attention to all the lies and vows, okay? Because this is what's contributing to the attraction to narcissists. And if you're attracted to narcissists, then you might have a lot of the same or similar lies or vows. Um, so the first one, um, yeah, was... Uh, that, that life was not worth living. So I had to go through the prayerful steps of freedom to address that. Um, so that means, you know, I confessed it, repented of it, renounced it, revoked it, broke the yokes to any demons that were associated with the lie that basically gained access to me through that lie. Um, I invited the Holy Spirit to come into my body, soul, spirit, domain, and bloodlines, wherever uh, that lie and those demons were. And I invited Jesus in to replace that lie with the truth that life is worth living. That life is a gift from Father God. Um, and then I forbid uh, retaliation from Lucifer, his fallen angels, his demons, minions, agents, and pawns against my body, soul, spirit, domain, and bloodlines. Okay, the next set was one memory at the age of one, and the emotion was denial. And the lie that I believed was that enmeshment equals love. So again, I'm going to define enmeshment for you. Enmeshment is too much intimacy. Um, a word that would come to mind would be like smothering, okay? So again, um, the people who are usually attracted to narcissists are what are usually called love addicts, love addiction. And how that uh, how a person becomes a, a love addict is because they usually have one parent that enmeshes them, that's, that gives them too much intimacy, and the other parent is just the opposite, not enough intimacy. They are very uh, distant and neglectful. Okay, so the lie that I had to address there was that enmeshment equals love. Um, and if you, you know, I mean, there's there's different versions of narcissists out there, you know. Um, but one of the things that narcissists do is, you know, they will kind of enmesh you or encourage enmeshment in the relationship period because that's how they learn everything about you so that they can then twist it against you and, and use stuff against you and everything. Okay, um, the next set that I dealt with was one memory at birth and there was a bunch of emotions in, in this one. Uh, powerlessness. I had to forgive God for putting me down here without any control. So, again, um, you know, when you forgive God, it's not necessarily that he's uh, guilty of anything. Or, like, in, in, in this case, what, what I was forgiving God for, like, yes, technically he did put me down here and I didn't have any control or say in that matter. So it's not necessarily, like, 
um, not true, but it's basically that like you're you're not only blaming God, but like you're attributing him of having some kind of like um, ill motive towards you. Okay, so so when you for, when you blame God for that, or when you attribute a ill motive to God um, in order to kind of retrace your steps and go backwards, you have to forgive God. So I know a lot of people, some people take issue with that, but that's what I was taught. And no, I don't just go I don't just go along with anything. Uh, you know, I, I question everything, but to me it makes sense. Like, if I'm blaming God, then why wouldn't I forgive God? Like, in terms of, like, the, the brain pathway of, like, you're, you're retracing your steps. Like, you're undoing it, you know? Um, okay, the next emotion was frustration, and then the next emotion was insecurity, and the next emotion was abandoned. The lie that I believed was that God didn't care about my experience on earth. So I had to renounce that lie and deal with that. Okay, but you can see how all these lies so far contribute to an attraction to narcissists, right? Um, okay, so moving on. I had a lot of resistant emotions and um, collarbone statements that I needed to deal with. Um, and again, a resistant emotion is, you know, you're sitting down to like address something to do work regarding inner healing and deliverance. Um, a resistant emotion is basically like your your soul, your mind, your heart is preoccupied with something. And so you have to kind of like deal with that so that you can focus on what you want to focus on. Um, and so I went through a bunch of different, um, I had a resistant emotion of low self-esteem. I had to do a collarbone statement that my subconscious admits that I needed to do the work. I had to do another call, uh, bleh, another collarbone statement of willingness that my subconscious is willing to do this work. Um, I had another resistant emotion of shutdown, um, muddled thoughts and feelings, deprived, um, another uh, muddled thoughts and feelings that they were stored in different body parts, different organs, um, paranoia, um, and then I did a set. So the next set was, um, one memory at the age of 38, which was basically just like recently. So a lot of these resistant emotions and whatnot had to do with the counterfeit that I was dealing with, uh, recently. Um, and this set had to do with him and the emotions were vivid dreaming again, which is like ruminating, um, and shut down. And uh, apparently I made a vow. Um, so what happened with this recent counterfeit was that um, I had a dream years ago um, of a big green lush mountain and there was a banner hung across the mountain and it said, um, actually I'm not going to go into this because I, I don't want to, uh, like, uh, I shouldn't be broadcasting my, my stuff. So anyway, I, I had a dream and there was stuff regarding this counterfeit that kind of fit with the dream. And so anyway... I made a vow that um, that I would not trust God's signs, so I had to renounce that vow. Um, just because the devil brings a counterfeit doesn't mean that, that God is not trustworthy, so I had to renounce that. Um, and then I took a break, and then I came back and did more work, and I had to do a collarbone statement again of my subconscious admits that I need to do this work. Um, I had a resistant emotion of frustration, a resistant, a resistant emotion of anger, a resistant emotion of spiritual aggression, a resistant emotion, or I'm sorry, uh, then I had to do a collarbone statement of safety, which is something something to the effect of like, I, I am safe to make these changes, um, resistant emotion of grudging, like begrudging. Um, I had to do a, a collarbone statement of worthy, um, which is, you know, I am worthy to make these changes. Um, I had to do a collarbone statement of, uh, of change. I forget what that statement is. I, it's something like, I need to make this change or so, something like that. Um, I had to do a collarbone statement of being myself, which is, you know, I will still be myself after I make these changes. Um, I had a resistant emotion of muddled thoughts and feelings. I had another resistant emotion of um, just a, a bad memory. And then I had to do an algorithm. So again, an algorithm in Splankna is, um, depending on which one you have to do, um, but most of them include um, emotional freedom technique, which means you're tapping on different points of the meridian system to kind of like clear out the... Um, the microscopic e e electrical circuitry 
um, and then at the end of the algorithm you do um, EMDR. So um, EMDR again is eye movement desensitization and reprocessing. Basically all it, all it is is you're stimulating um, two parts of the brain or, or both hemispheres I forget, um, of the brain at the same time. And so it's basically like you're creating new or changing the pathways in the brain regarding uh, the like trauma and whatever. Um, and basically how you do that on yourself is um, you can you can like just tap with one hand on your uh, knee while you're like moving your fingers and like watching your fingers with your own eyes. Like that's how I'm doing it on myself. Um, so anyway, I had to do that. I had to do, uh, a, an algorithm for, for depression slash pain. Um, and if I remember correctly, that one is just strictly EMDR. Um, I had to do a collarbone statement of being myself. So again, I had to make a statement of, um, you know, I will still be myself after I make these changes. Okay. And then I had a resistant emotion of vivid dreaming, which is ruminating and then I had to do a collarbone statement of um, content which um, says something to the effect of I can handle dealing with this content the, like the content of, of this work like basically what this work is pertaining to um, and when you have to do a lot of collarbone statements like that that means that like your subconscious like doesn't want to deal with it that um, you know it's it's a form of what we call resistance of like you know there's like it's it's so heavy or whatever emotionally that like you don't want to deal with it um and so collarbone statements kind of override that so that you do deal with it and you can kind of push through okay um so the next set that i did was 25 memories from the age of 1 to 38 so pretty much most of my life most of my existence um, there was two emotions of deprived and paranoia, and I made a vow, and the vow was um, that I would never entrust my heart to any human. So, 25 times I made that vow, because the emotions of deprived and paranoia were, were triggered. Um, it's amazing what we do subconsciously. So can you see how, you know, making this vow to never entrust my heart to any human, that's going to prevent me from, um, or that probably has prevented me from engaging any kind of healthy relationships, hence the attraction to the unhealthy, the narcissist, right? So hope this is making sense. Um, so, um, so yeah, that was definitely like counterproductive. I mean, all of this stuff is, um, which is why we have to deal with it. Um, okay, so the next set was uh, one memory at the age of 28, which was about um, when my ex-husband uh, left me. I had the emotion of vivid dreaming, which is ruminating. I had to forgive my ex-husband for abandoning me. I had the emotion of love unreturned. I had to forgive my ex-husband for not loving me, and I made a vow, and this, this was surprising, because as you guys can tell, like, I very much want to be married and married to the right man that God picks for me, right? And just pretty much all my life, I've always wanted to be with my husband, whoever he is, you know, like, have that one person, you know, that, that one person in my corner that I can count on, right? So get this. This is the vow that I made when my ex-husband left. I mean, he was a narcissist. He was abusive. He was a, um, an atheist. And um, I mean, he might have shifted to agnosticism by the time he left me. But, um, you know, he, he was not, me, him and I were not brought together by God. So when he left, I was devastated. Um, at one point, I was actually suicidal. Um, but apparently, I made a vow. I made a vow that I would never marry again. Hmm. I wonder why I'm still not married. <laughs> right? Like, let's think about this. So I had to renounce that and deal with that, right? Um, the next set was uh, 10 memories from the age of birth to age one. And the emotion was forsaken. And um, 
I muscle tested to, to see like who I felt forsook by and it was uh, I felt forsook I, I felt forsook by God and I made a vow and the vow was that uh, I would turn my back on God and not trust him um, and so as much as I've always had faith in God I've always had this like rebellious thing going on and so there's been a lot of uh, this kind of stuff co coming up these kinds of lies and vows coming up as I do work on myself um, because basically when God put me down here um, I felt abandoned by him I felt like he didn't love me I felt like he didn't care I was mad at him <laughs> for putting me down here um, which is kind of cute and comical um, but very serious at the same time um, and then the last set that I did was 38 memories from the age of 3 to 8. And this was pertaining to um, all of my half-siblings uh, kind of coming into the picture. Um, because that began... I mean, my mom had like a shotgun wedding and married my stepfather because she got pregnant. And, that, and we moved into that house when I was about 3. So that does kind of makes sense that that's that's when my first sibling was like you know she was pregnant with him and then um my youngest uh, half sibling uh, her and I are about eight years apart so it, it does fit um in the middle of this set I had a resistant emotion of paranoia that I had to clear um but in the set I had a, a I had the emotion of grudging and powerless um so I guess this is just your typical, you know, firstborn, you know, feeling, uh, you know, um, insecure, jealous, uh, not loved, whatever, because, you know, siblings are coming into the picture kind of thing. Um, so uh, the vow that I made was that I would find my own support system. And, um, you know, that's that's been a, a, a big part of like why I've always been driven or attracted to narcissists is like I'm always trying to find that support system um, and so I go to them and um, you know because they you know they they want to suck somebody in you know so that's what they do is they they look for people like myself who don't really uh, have a support system and they kind of target them because well they see them as as, as as easy targets so anyway so that's uh that's the work that I did the rest of the 26th and I'm probably gonna sit down tonight and do some more work on myself so anyway um I'll just keep continuing to you know share this journey with you guys and hope it's you know helpful and insightful I mean that that's why I am sharing it is because um, I know I've got some people subscribed that um, have dealt with or are dealing with, you know, narcissistic abuse and, and whatnot. Um, and so you probably have a lot of the same, you know, issues that I have had or have. Um, and so I'm trying to get to the bottom of it. And so hopefully, you know, this is insightful to you. And you can, you know, go in your prayer closet and ask, you know, Jesus to, um, you know, confirm you know whether you have the same lies or vows or similar ones and you can just kind of seek his face and ask him to show you you know what lies and vows do you have and then you can go through the prayerful steps to freedom and start addressing your own stuff um so yeah so that's that for this video and uh i will continue to share as i continue on this journey getting to the bottom of this because i'm going to get to the bottom of this <laughs> Um, all right. I bless you all in Jesus' name.